During an interview yesterday, former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney shut down a Fox News host's nonsense defense of Donald Trump. Yesterday, Liz Cheney appeared on Brett Baer's show on Fox News. Liz Cheney is, of course, the former Republican Congresswoman who spoke out against Trump's efforts to overthrow a democratic process to install himself as the president. And because of that, Republican voters quickly removed her from her position of power because that is the modern Republican Party, a super conservative individual who voted with Trump almost every opportunity that she had, dares to say, Maybe we shouldn't shred our constitution in favor of Trump and should allow for the peaceful transfer of power. And her career is over, at least in the GOP, pretty instantly. Crazy stuff. Well, she released a book where she talks about her experience after the 2020 election, watching Republicans go along with Trump's lies about the election, watching so many of them root on or even participate in Trump's attempts to unconstitutionally stay in power. And so many different things. And while discussing her book with Brett Baer, Baer tries to pose a counter argument to Liz Cheney, who's warning about Trump's dictatorial ambitions for a second term. And Baer essentially says, well, aren't Trump and Biden like sort of the same? I mean, Biden signed some executive orders and tried to readjust policies to get around Supreme Court rulings. Eh? And Liz Cheney correctly shuts it down. Specifically, and, and I understand what you're saying about the former president, what you feel about what would happen. But you but haven't been vocal. Not, but not, you haven't right. been vocal about but President what, Biden well, when, I, like, executive yeah, orders to cancel student loan, but, ban but evictions, mandate COVID yeah, vaccines. Brett, well, here's a I, list. I think it's a very different thing. After the SCOTUS ruled. Are you going to let me answer the Yeah, I am. Though? Just let me list them. After the SCOTUS ruled against it, he still used regulatory means to write off, you know, the student debt, wall off uh, 1.5 million acres of land for fossil fuel. What, what this basically is saying is that there are things that have been done outside of the rule of federal courts that you haven't weighed in on. Well, first of all, I don't think it's true that I haven't weighed in on those. And I think a lot of those, if you look at the kinds of things that he's done with respect, for example, to energy policy, with respect to setting aside lands across the West, I've been very vocal that I think those policies are wrong. It's very different from a president. And look, you wrote a book uh, about George Washington. The last chapter of your book is called The Gift of a Peaceful Transition of Power. That's, that is what we're talking about. Yeah, but, but this I, is not about this, me. That's right, but that's a very important concept. Let me finish my answer, because every single president, Republican and Democrat, since George Washington, has ensured the peaceful transition of power. Donald Trump tried to seize power. So we can uh, disagree with Biden policies, but the fact that he tried to seize power, the fact that he ignored the rulings of 61 courts, the fact that he ignored his own uh, attorney general, his own White House counsel who told him what he was saying about the election was false. It wasn't true. His claims were false, and he went out and made them anyway, knowing that. The extent to which he, while a violent mob was assaulting the Capitol, he wouldn't tell them to leave. Instead, he tweeted against his own vice president and he poured fuel on the flames. Those are lines that can't be crossed. And, and look, this isn't about policy. I voted with Donald Trump 93% of the time. This is about the nation. It's about the republic. It's about the Constitution. You know, we talk a lot on this show about how the media far too often tries to incorrectly equate the actions of extreme ag Republicans and Democrats. But that was a whole nother level. <laughs> the most ridiculous false equivalency I've seen in a really long time. Okay, on one end, you have a president who tried to block the peaceful transfer of power, something that if it had worked would have ended American democracy. But on the other hand, consider this. Biden's student debt forgiveness plan was struck down by the Supreme Court, which that meant he wasn't able to follow through with that plan. That's why a bunch of people were disappointed and instead found other ways within his executive authority to provide student debt relief. But it's not the scope uh, and scale of the original plan he tried to implement. That's called being president. Brett, sometimes you have to adjust your policies and see if they can make it through the courts. How on earth that is comparable to the actions of Trump? I don't know. And Biden, even right-wingers, I feel like would have to admit this, is an institutionalist. He has been for quite some time. And this is what people really need to acknowledge. We can have policy differences in the country and still have a stable functioning democracy. As Liz Cheney is saying, she disagrees with Biden on a bunch of stuff. 
And by the way, I think Liz Cheney's voting record in Congress, her policy stances are awful, awful. And those things matter. It's not to ignore the importance of these super important policy issues. I want to defeat the Liz Cheney's of the world in elections so that we can implement good policies that benefit people's lives. But that battle is made possible through our democratic process. And so all the individuals involved in the battle have to have some basic level of respect for our democracy, institutions, and constitution. Then we can electorally fight it out. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And that's where Liz Cheney diverges from many of her former Republican colleagues. She's willing to say that she'd rather someone that she disagrees with severely on policy, but who respects democracy be the president than someone who she agrees with more technically on policy, but who doesn't respect democracy. And as we've been covering over the last who knows how long Liz Cheney has been warning in some pretty stark terms about the threat that Trump poses if he were to get into office again. Here's a reminder of that. We will be voting on whether to preserve our republic in the next election. You think this is a vote about whether or not we still have democracy in this country? It certainly is, you know, and, and Donald Trump has told us exactly what he will do. He will not abide by the rulings of the courts. Uh, he uh, will certainly appoint people to office whether or not they can be confirmed by the Senate. Um, he uh, has talked about using the military uh, in terms that uh, really are fundamentally un-American, uh, including here in the United States. So it's a very dangerous moment, and it's a moment for people to understand that, that that cannot be the path that we go down as a country. Just yesterday in an interview, you, you said fundamentally there's a choice to be made. You can't be both for Donald Trump and for the Constitution. You have to choose. Yeah. A vote for Donald Trump is unconstitutional, anti-American. Well, he won't he won't support and uphold the Constitution. We've already seen what happened. Uh, he is the only president in American history who attempted to overturn an election, who attempted to seize power, to stay in power after he had lost. Um, and the reason that it, we didn't have a much more serious crisis was because there were people around him who stopped him, because there were people around the country, state officials, for example, who stopped him, who did not yield to the pressure that he put on them to change votes from Biden to Trump. Um, we won't have that safeguard again. And, and he's so dangerous. Uh, if you have a president who is unwilling to abide by the rulings of the courts, who's unwilling to uphold the Constitution, then there are no guardrails who can stop him. Uh, you've, said that can stop him. you've said we are sort of sleepwalking into dictatorship in the United States. Dictatorship. Is that what we yeah. would have if we reelect Donald Trump? I think it's it's a very, very real threat and concern. And, and I don't say any of that lightly. And frankly, um, it's painful for me as someone who, you know, has spent her whole life in uh, Republican politics, who grew up as a Republican, to watch what's happening to my party uh, and, and to watch the extent to which Donald Trump himself um, has, uh, you know, basically determined that that uh, the only thing that matters is uh, him, his power, his success. And um, that is not somebody you can entrust with the power of the presidency. It seems crazy to ask this and even crazier to fathom it. But do you believe if Donald Trump were elected next year that he would try to stay in office beyond a second term? I that he would never leave office? There's no question. There's you think no he would question. try to stay in power forever? Uh, absolutely. I mean, he's already done it once. And in fact, if you look at what he did in the run up to January 6th in terms of his pressure on the vice president not to count legitimate electoral votes, his pressure on the Department of Justice, on state officials, and then refusing to send help when the Capitol was under attack, um, he's already attempted to seize power. And he was stopped, um, thankfully, and, and for the good of the nation and the republic, uh, but but he said he will do it again. He's expressed no remorse for what he did. Now, the more people out in the world that I talk to about politics, the more I realize there is a severe, severe deficit in understanding among the general public about what people mean when they say Trump is a threat to democracy. Often people will respond when I say that by going, oh, because he said the election was stolen, which granted is a part of it is bad for our democracy. But my goodness, it's so much more than just that. So lately, as my consistent viewers probably notice, might be getting a little tired of, I don't bring that up without going through what I mean, at least somewhat specifically, by using that phrase. Obviously, I can't go through everything. It would take all day to do that, but at least go through the list that I have been over and over again, and we'll do that now, so that you can sort of memorize these things and then let other people know about them 
And hopefully we can, in some small way, be a part of trying to inform more people on the real threat to democracy that's posed by Trump in 2024. So here's the quick why Trump is a wannabe dictator and a threat to democracy sort of breakdown. Trump in 2020 and 2021 tried to block the peaceful transfer of power to keep himself on the White House after he lost the 2020 election. He did this through multiple schemes, not just his words. Oh, he just said, not just his words, and not just through the legal pathways you have to challenge elections like the courts, but outside of that legal process. He did this through the fake elector scheme, for example, trying to get people, and they did, to sign forms saying they were the duly elected and lawful electors of certain swing states that they weren't, and then say that Trump won in the states that he didn't, disenfranchising millions of voters. That's what they were trying to do, getting Mike Pence to count those instead of the lawful electors, and then pretending like Trump won the Electoral College when he didn't, just defrauding the American electorate, or trying to pressure election officials to engage in fraud and all these different schemes. Then when all these efforts outside of our legal process for challenge elections failed, he incited a mob to attack the Capitol. Then since then, he's called for the termination of the Constitution, said the government should, quote, come down hard, end quote, on media outlets he doesn't like, said that in times gone by, his former top general, Mark Milley, would be executed. He said he wants to be a dictator explicitly. He can't stop obsessively complimenting Xi Jinping, Vladimir Putin, and Kim Jong-un, he's directly echoing the words of Hitler and said he's going to prosecute his political enemies if he gets into office again. He also plans to invoke the Insurrection Act to crush demonstrations against him and plans to replace the entire executive branch with people who are fully loyal to him and will do whatever he pleases. It's so important that we go through those things over and over again, pound the drum. And there's more, obviously, because people just aren't aware when I'm sitting with people who do vote but don't keep up with politics a ton and go through that list, their eyes widen, they're shocked and understand why people are saying he should never be president again when they previously didn't quite get it. I mean, we had a peaceful transfer of power all the way until Donald Trump, this great record before him on that particular part of our democracy that's crucial. And he believes himself to be more important than our constitution that's so dangerous. He's shown it with his actions and his words. And just shut people down when they go, oh yeah, you don't like something Trump said about the election or some joke he made about wanting to be a dictator. Obviously both those things are by themselves cause for concern, but it's also so much more than that. Before we go, don't forget to become a member at LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership to get the daily bonus show Monday through Friday. Plus, follow me on threads at Luke Beasley Official, Instagram at Luke Beasley Official X, at Luke P. Beasley, and sign up for the Beasley Brief, a daily morning newsletter that summarizes the previous day's events by going to LukeBeasleyShow.com slash brief, and I'll talk to you all next time.